I think we had a very good day. Most of you, most of you were here. I'm glad that we are. A I see a couple of new faces in the audience this morning. Um, we had lots of interesting conversations throughout the day that carried on into the evening. That allegedly, so I was told, carried on into later into the night. Um, I, I had an opportunity to talk to to a couple of you to collect a few impressions after the end of the day schedule and got lots of different comments, a lot of them very interesting and, and noteworthy, and we're going to pick up more of them at the closing session this evening when we try to figure out what, if anything, to take home and how to make sense of it all. I just wanted to highlight three things which are maybe particularly noteworthy, um, which capture several people's sentiments in different kinds of way that might be worth taking into today's session and, and, and sort of to keep in mind. The first one is this issue about um, were we maybe agreeing with each other a little too easily and a little too fast? Um, there, there seemed to be a great sense of this emerging consensus about whatever it is that we're emergingly in consensus about. One of these is around this issue of basics first, um, before you do more advanced things, which, at least in terms of rhetoric, that is certainly very different from what it was like a decade ago or 15 years ago. But unless, um, or I should say, as long as nobody really knows what basics are, it's also okay to agree that basics should be done first, because then whatever it is that you do first happen to be the basics, and we can agree that we are all very prudent in, in our thinking about this. There's another issue around this question of political economy and how to deal with political economy where um, this um, concern was there almost throughout all of the sessions, starting with Antoinette's very strong statement in the morning about she thinks the IMF is or ought to be thinking about the issue of political economy right until the very end of the very last session when we were talking again about how political economy analysis and political economy products might be part of, of people's toolkit as they approach reform situations. Th th there doesn't, there seems to be an agreement about it matters, it probably matters a big deal, but there isn't so much a sense of how, how specifically and in what ways to deal with that question. And this morning session and again the afternoon session in different ways will give us an opportunity to pick that question up again. And just finally, one last point about this issue of, 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 of maybe a too easy emerging consensus is the question that um, several people raised yesterday. I think Renault was the one who did it on the panel, um, that it wouldn't really p be particularly useful to replace one orthodoxy that prescriptively says, this is the set of things that you can choose from, and everything else is bad, and you have to do it in the same way with another set of things that are just as prescriptive, just as specific, and therefore just as inappropriate probably <coughs> from many different contexts. The second point, and I've already alluded to this, is the, and this is of course a perennial concern, and there have been lots of conferences about this question specifically, and only because with lots of people from international o uh, organizations in the audience, um, the, the self-referential element comes in very quickly, and so, of course, there were many questions about what does this mean for the role of donors, um, how well are international agencies, IFIs, um, bilateral donors equipped to deal with these kinds of challenges. I, I, I spoke to, to several people during the breaks <coughs> who were telling me that it was very interesting to, to hear Antoinette emphasize so strongly the role of PFM and to emphasize so strongly the role of political astuteness back to basics, to challenging each other about what's appropriate in a given context. However, that wasn't quite the IMF that they knew when, you, when they were going into the field. And so there is certainly a question about how much is this something which on a relatively superficial level is now be becoming an, an accepted way of speaking about things and how does that relate to the actual way of doing things country by, by country? And I think somebody very 
very cheekily mentioned um, during one of the conversations that maybe there also ought to be a conversation about the <laughs> capability of donors and not just about the capability of governments. Um, and then finally, the third point is about this question of capacity and capability. It was clearly the topic of the afternoon session, but we also heard many different points and arguments made about capacity during the morning session and in much less academic, much less theoretical fashion during Antoinette's speech and especially during Luis Diogo's speech. And it just prompted me to think that I think people were on the edge of their seats taking copious notes when, when Doña Luisa was talking about her Rising Stars program in the Ministry of Finance and how she was trying to force people who were the, the, the big shots in the ministry to promote, to promote Rising Stars, to not take meetings with them um, without them bringing along two or three young people who were becoming part of the conversation. And it seemed that um, for, all, for all the interesting things that we were putting on the table, a relatively simple story about this is how I went about it and this is what it meant to me to capacitate the staff in my ministry and to work with my team um, was, was something that was filling pages and pages of notes and so um, there certainly is going to be a question and again we will hear about this in the morning in the morning session um, how do you how, how do you deal with the little things and then in the afternoon um, to the extent that all of this has to matter somehow and we need to be able to demonstrate and measure results um, in terms of increasing capability, which is all nice and good, but then um, let's not forget that maybe there might just be a market for the two-page note or the five-page note saying um, these are the three things that a Minister of Finance learned during the five years of her tenure that somebody else might just find useful and pick it up again. And I'm going to leave it at that, and I'm very, very excited about the first panel now. Over to Andy. Philip, thank you very much indeed. I'm Andy Norton. I'm the Director of Research of ODI, um, and delighted to be taking on from Phil, because it gives me <coughs> a chance to congratulate him on the really excellent preparatory materials that he prepared for this conference, which I think are fantastic quality, and apart from anything else, make my job as chair in this session um, much easier, the, the great way he's laid out the territory in the, um, in the document for this um, session. My first job in ODI was as part of the original CAPE team with Mick Foster and Adrian Fozard, and it's always, on a personal note, a fantastic pleasure for me to touch base with the great work that CAPE are doing at the moment. I had to miss yesterday. I'm very much looking forward to being with you um, for the whole of the day today. So. I'll move on now to a quick introduction of this session, um, which, um, as Phil was indicating, uh, I think we have a tremendous panel to take on one of the core topics um, about budgeting in the real world. How can reformers deliver change in the budget process? Um, a set of very interesting <laughs> questions laid out. I love the introduction about the um, heroic scale of the assumption that international agencies' engagement in reform uh, it's a departure point, which is generally that the status quo should change, and the way in which that's often not interrogated and the problems that arise from that. But anyway, we will get into the detail as we get into the presentations. Um, in terms of the structure of this session, there is a coffee break. Um, what I'll do is to have the, the three speakers go first, then we'll break for coffee, and then we'll have the discussant, Marco Cangione, Assistant, di Can sorry, Canjana, <coughs> Assistant Director of the IMF um, to introduce the discussion when we come back, to give you some ideas to get the discussion flowing at that point. Um, and before then, we have three speakers. Um, the third one, perhaps appropriately, is kind of a ghost of, at the table at the moment. And Matt Andrews, I think, has been a ghost at the table at discussions in this field um, very much since the publication of his trenchant critique of normal practice in 2013. But I understand he is going to be here. He will make a dramatic appearance um, <laughs> mid-session. And Matt, of course, is Harvard Kennedy School Associate Professor. Um, 
Kicking off will be Tim Williamson, um, who's done a fantastic job for ODI's Budget Strengthening Initiative, leading its South Sudan program, is in the process of handing that on at the moment, and will be reflecting on that in his comments. Um, and then the second speaker will be Amal Lanid, Director of Policy and Governance at PwC, who has a, you know, a lot of experience, particularly, I believe, of budget reform in MENA, in yeah. the Middle East and North Africa. So um, that should provide us with a good regional coverage as well in terms of the issues we need to cover. So with that, I'll hand on to Tim to get us going.